You know, during the first year of since President Trump withdrew from the nuclear deal, Iran implemented a policy of strategic patience. It was basically sitting on its hands and trying not to get provoked by either doing something reckless in the region or by violating the nuclear deal. Uh, but recent moves by the Trump administration in trying to uh, bring Iran's oil exports to zero and try to designate the Revolutionary Guards as a foreign terrorist organization has basically compelled the Iranians to impose a cost on U.S. policy. That means that Iran has already taken steps that would, in a matter of few weeks, put it in violation of the nuclear deal uh, by rolling back some of its commitments under the agreement. Uh, and there's also the possibility that Iran has been involved in some of uh, the recent attacks that we've seen in the region, for example, attacks on the tankers in the Persian Gulf or um, on Saudi uh, oil pipeline, east-west oil, oil, oil pipeline. So it is quite possible that uh, Iran's strategic patience is coming to an end. And that means, uh, unfortunately, I think uh, that the risks of a potential confrontation between Iran and the U.S. and their respective allies in the region uh, is now higher than at any point in the past decade. I think the irony in this situation is that the higher the risks of an economic unraveling in Iran, the more motivation that the Iranians would have to change the subject domestically by engaging uh, in some kind of a military confrontation with the U.S. Uh, and its allies in the region. Because at that point in time, uh, the question uh, on the Iranian streets from the economic well-being or uh, concerns about uh, um, you know, the pollution in the country or unpaid salaries would give it space to national security concerns. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, about a year ago when I was speaking to a senior Iranian official, uh, I mentioned this possibility that maybe the Europeans and other signatories to the nuclear deal would not be able to provide Iran with enough economic incentives to keep the economy afloat. Uh, and he responded, that's the stage that the Iranian system would welcome a crisis. And I, I'm afraid we're reaching that threshold uh, very quickly now. I don't feel we're um, close to the brink of economic collapse in Iran, but we are getting to uh, the dire straits economically much quicker than expected. Uh, I believe that the Iranians had uh, enough economic cushion to stay afloat until 2020 presidential elections in the U.S. and then see what happens at that point. Uh, but U.S. has been much more successful uh, in enforcing its unilateral sanctions that the Iranians anticipated. The reality is that the Trump administration has been able to take more of Iran's oil off the market uh, unilaterally that the Obama administration ever managed with international support. Uh, and that's why uh, the economic situation in Iran has deteriorated at much faster pace that the, than the Iranians expected. Uh, it is, however, important to notice uh, that the Iranians um, have a lot of experience in circumventing U.S. sanctions have, a, have built in a lot of resilience in their economy, have created economic ties with some of their neighbors, like in Iraq or in Afghanistan or with Turkey, uh, that allows them uh, to have an economic lifeline under difficult circumstances that is more or less immune to U.S. sanctions. And of course, other countries, uh, depending on their own relations with the U.S., might or might not help. Uh, for example, China uh, appeared as two weeks ago uh, to, to be caving to U.S. pressure. Now it seems that it's actually challenging U.S. sanctions. Uh, and these are questions that would basically determine how quickly Iran would get uh, to the point of no return <coughs> economically. Uh, for sure, I think uh, the Chinese obviously prioritize their own trade negotiations with the U.S. Um, uh, over uh, any economic ties with Iran. And of course, the Chinese also import oil from other countries uh, in the Gulf region. Uh, so they always had a delicate balancing act that they had to manage. Uh, but um, it appears that with uh, trade negotiations between the U.S. and China coming to some kind of a dead end, uh, the Chinese have now more interest uh, in making sure that U.S. Uh, unilateral sanctions on Iran do not succeed. The Chinese also have long-term interests uh, with, uh, with regards to Iran because this is the only country uh, in the oil-rich Middle East uh, that basically does not have a U.S. foothold in it. Uh, so if they're thinking about 50 to 100 years, 
uh, it is important to make sure that the Iranian regime does not collapse uh, into uh, the U.S. orbit. Look, the Iranians uh, believe that the Europeans have the political will um, to provide Iran with some kind of economic reprieve in the face of U.S. strangulating sanctions. Uh, but they believe that the Europeans lack the practical will uh, because any kind of serious effort to help Iran keep its economy afloat requires uh, a certain degree of willingness to confront the U.S. and take the risk and they believe that the Europeans don't have uh, that kind of uh, um, risk-taking capability. The problem is, in reality, Europe is a big open market, uh, and the European governments, even if they wanted to, they can't really dictate to the private sector how to calculate their risk benefit. Um, and at the end of the day, um, the mechanism that the Europeans have put in place, the special purpose vehicle known as INSTEX, uh, has not become operational yet. And even when it becomes operational, it is designed initially to just do humanitarian trade. So at the end of the day, it's really not going to be a silver bullet for the Iranian economy at all. What the Iranians want the Europeans to do is to import oil uh, from Iran. Uh, but importing oil requires a kind of infrastructure uh, from, tank, uh, from, from oil tankers to insurance to refineries that are all private sector in Europe. Uh, that basically none of these are willing to take the risk and the European government can't dictate to them. I think a much better strategy from the Iranian side would have been from the very beginning, from the early stages, to invest in trying to get the economic incentives out of Asia, uh, China, India, uh, uh, South Korea and other countries in, in Asia, and try to get political support from the European Union. Uh, but it seems that the Iranians have put themselves in a rhetorical corner now, and unless the Europeans deliver the economic uh, dividends that they expect, they are going to uh, take retaliatory measures of their own uh, in terms of gradually withdrawing from uh, the nuclear deal.